Hello everybody, my name is Jen and you are very welcome back to Law Hero. So today I, I've been asked to give a recap of the PPC1, PPC2. I understand that a lot of people who subscribe to me find me by way of FE1 and that's fine. And I can understand that they want to know the next step in their journey. So for me, I just want to explain, I think it's important that uh, you know what I'm trying to do here. So for me, Law Hero is initially, I will assist you or these videos will assist you with uh, FE1 or if you're thinking of going down the barrister route, King's Inns and then also for QLTT. But my hope is that you would stick with me. And that's because I cover content around uh, trainee solicitor. So when you do get your training contract, which is the vocational stage of being a solicitor, um, I don't have knowledge around the vocational stage of being a barrister, but I do know some young barristers, so I might actually do a Q&A with them. I was actually talking to one recently and he he had very interesting things to say, but anyway. Um, and then and then this part, which is the academic stage of being a solicitor, which is the PPC1, PPC2. So just so you're aware of the structure, FE1 is the first examination of the Law Society of Ireland. Then you have the FE2 and the FE3, which are the final exams after the PPC1 and PPC2, respectively. So PPC stands for Professional Practice Course. And the clue is in the Practicing name. Practicing to become a professional. And that necessitates some more academic learning and then in between the PPC1 and PPC2 you can you continue your vocational training uh, on site with your trainee solicitor in the firm you're in. So obviously to apply to the PPC1 uh, to complete the FE2 examination you need to have a training contract. Usually you will be sponsored as in you will be paid your usual income by your training solicitor while you're at Black Hall Place um, which is where uh, the PPC1 and PPC2 will take place on site. Obviously with Covid at the moment a lot of it is off site but I don't think that's going to be forever. They've just built a state-of-the-art education centre and they've also redone all the pitches and everything around there. So don't you worry, honey boo-boo, you are going to be back in there. It's great. It's a, it's a great facility. Um, so, yeah, your solicitor, training solicitor or your firm will pay uh, also your fee to attend Black Hall Place. So if you consider it from the point of view of an employer, it's a massive investment. You're not only paying somebody's income while they're in Black Hall, but you're also paying the fee. And that feeds into a larger question of the time wasting that goes on in Black Hall. A lot of employers, especially the big firms, are looking at the cost of sending someone to Black Hall Place. We'll say if they, you know, the big firms, they usually have around 30 trainees. That's a big budget they have to put aside. And then if somebody walks um, after three years, as in they leave once they're qualified, um, that's effectively, it's not a loss of investment because that person more than likely will feed some business back to the law firm they trained with. Um, just like the accounting firms do um, but at the same time it's a big investment so that is the reason why the trainee solicitor slots are so limited that is the reason why it's so competitive it's because you are investing in human capital and a lot of the time people get all airy fairy they're like oh I'm a good person all that at the end of the day you're just a number you're only as good as your output you're only as good as your input into the business and um, you have to see it very coldly like that if you don't pass the PPC1, PPC2, you're out on your own because nobody really cares. You were supposed to do a job. You were supposed to pass it and become an asset to the business. I'm speaking very objectively and I'm speaking very truthful, but a lot of people don't really understand the business impetus of having somebody trained to be a solicitor. You are a cog in the wheel. You are nothing more than that, especially in the big firms. Um, unless you're going into your family practice, nobody really cares about your thoughts, feelings and emotions. Okay, so moving on from that, and sorry to be, you know, speak like that, but so let's just take a quick rundown through. So, you know, obviously you guys can go on the Law Society website, but I think it's more fun to hear it from me um, because what I'll do is I'll give you anecdotal stuff as we're going through it. So I've done videos before on what is Black Hall Place, uh, like way back when I started this YouTube channel. Um, but I suppose this one's a little bit more comprehensive. Here, it runs from September to March and it is mostly female. So it's, 
you know, roughly 60-40% uh, female male. You get an iPad because they deliver a lot of the content uh, through an iPad because of sustainability and because it's much easier to deliver content um, onto the apps and the iPad. Anyway, some people have been asking me about the PPC hybrid. That just means you spend some time um, it, it's usually for people who have families or who are living not like you know very far from Dublin and just can't relocate because of their own personal circumstances so that's what the PPC hybrid is it's trying to make it more inclusive of people who are you know thinking of becoming a solicitor basically later on in life it's not really geared towards uh, young trainees but they can apply as well so usually it is a bit of an issue and I can understand that like for me it was grand because well, I had to move to Dublin. I moved from Germany to Dublin. You kind of need to be in Dublin for the PPC one because your training is happening um, in uh, in Dublin. And that, of course, is quite difficult for people who are, we'll say, you know, they're from the west of Ireland or Donegal. That's where they're training. And that means that, they, you know, they have to rent in Dublin. So it is a little bit of pressure for some people. Following subjects are covered on the PPC one. So you have applied land law business law. Actually what I'll do is I'll go down through them. Okay so the first is applied land law and basically just so you know the PPC1 when you're doing a subject it's split between uh, lectures so like you know slides and whatnot on a given topic and then there's also tutorials so everybody, the, like the 400 students that apply um, to the PPC1 are split into roughly 20 by 20 uh, tutorial groups. So there's like 10 and 10. And that's how they deal with, you know, like your individual questions or, you know, application of the law. And you basically have to go to your tutorials uh, for every given subject for like one hour a week. And like it's smaller groups so you can ask questions. And... From my recollection, the applied sorry, this is the this is facts. Applied land law was split, uh, so before Christmas and after Christmas. So before Christmas, we did general principles of land law, and then after Christmas, you do landlord and tenant law, and you get two manuals. You get one manual each for those, and then on the exam, it's split 50-50. So that's like basically like property law advanced. If you've done property law or uh, land law in um, what's it called undergraduate. Mm hmm. Then business law, which was, of course, my favorite subject. You get like a manual for that as well. It's like all the basics of business. Uh, it's a really fun course. I loved it. There is some tax involved in it as well, but that's okay because you do tax as a separate, separate subject anyway. So you kind of get, like I was pretty daunted by the tax piece in PPC1, but you get through it in the end. It's actually all just kind of formulas. Um... It seems now that they've put family law on the um, PPC 1. Now, when I was doing it, family law was in PPC 2. But again, it's a lovely subject. Um, it's very easy to follow. Um, then the other thing you have to do in PPC 1 is legal practice Irish, which is basically... So because everyone in Ireland is entitled to be represented in the native language of Irish, uh, you have to have a few key sentences, like which is, I am not an Irish speaker, but I know someone who is. Like that's basically what you have to do. You have to record a few conversations. You have to fill in a few blanks. It's really a tick the box exercise. The Law Society won't even like feel like I'm throwing shade because like it's a fact, it's a statutory element they have to fulfill. Um, but you, you have to do it to pass, but don't you worry, like, there are people from all nationalities who do the PPC one, like, there was a guy in our class from Moldova, and he passed, so it was grand. Um, then you do broadly litigation, so b before Christmas you do civil litigation, and after Christmas you do criminal litigation, again, it's very, very procedural, it's like the rules of the district court, criminal court, uh, the rules of the superior courts, which is very like admin, you don't learn, you don't really learn advocacy. It's more like the um, the rules around uh, this the courts in Ireland. Um, you do like the advocacy stuff in skills, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then you do probate and tax, which is for most people the most daunting. So 
we're talking about will drafting, um, if somebody dies in test um, and then you do the tax and the reliefs around um, when uh, property transfers to relatives um, and then all the different reliefs like agricultural relief um, and business reliefs, all that kind of stuff. It seems daunting, but actually it's all very much based on formula or formulae and um, I am not good with numbers, I say this all the time, but I, I think it was very well taught. Um, so by the way, the tutors on the tutorials are solicitors and they are really great. Um, some of them were mean, it's, especially if like people said stupid answers, they were like, are you tick? But the majority were lovely and um, they, ha they had really good insight into being a practitioner. And I don't know, when I was on the PPC one, I was like, okay, I think I made the right decision because these people are these people are bomb. I like them. You know what I mean? So then the final part of the PPC one is called skills and you don't do written exams for skills. It's all about advocacy and public speaking and you do it basically on a Friday. So um, you get, it's really great. They brought in actors from, um, I think it was from the Gaiety and um, like I had this one man who was seeking asylum and I had to help him and it was really great like we had a really great connection um, when we were speaking like I did not want it to end you also get like filmed um, given a speech you know it's it's really really great uh, opportunity to develop like that side of you and like I love seeing the people in my tutorial class like some people did monologues and stuff. It was just hilarious. Um, I, I really enjoyed skills. Like some people thought it was kind of boring, but I loved it. You get to write letters and you have to, you know, upload them um, to the Moodle. And yeah, you also get to either be the plaintiff or a defendant in a case. I think we had a workplace accident case and we got to um, actually like go through um, we, we were pretending we were barristers, even though solicitors have a right of audience in court, we, we were pretending we were barristers. So that was really fun. The exams were in March. They were on in the Red Cow. Uh, I don't think they're there anymore. They might be again when things go back to normal. But you'll all be well familiar with the with the red cow. Things you should know like about the PPC one. So they do do like some fringe topics like mindfulness and psychology as kind of support while you're in Blackhall Place. There's also a library there, which is extremely important um, if you're doing like moot court or stuff like that, because you need to do a lot of research. Like you don't need to do research on the PPC one because you're given all the materials. But we're saying if you're involved in some extracurricular debating, you will need access to the library. Also, it's a really great place to study. It's really quiet. Um, you get your own email account and like that gives you access to all the stuff that's going on. There's like, there's a pitch, there's a really good uh, like pitch on the grounds and there's a bar, but like, to be honest, I don't think we really used the bar when we were there. And it's like, a great place to park a bike because I cycled every day and like there's, there's really good bike, um, there's really good bike facilities. Okay, so then what happens is, so let me just make sure I get this correct. So we'll say you finish up on the PPC one in March and then you go um, back to the office. OK, so 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 let me just explain. Some people may have been in the office before the PPC one, like we were in Cox's, for example, but not everybody was. It depends on what your firm uh, wants you to do. OK, so, yeah, you have to do at least 12 months. Um, training after like two weeks after the PPC one ends okay because um in total because then the PPC two is three months and then after that you have to do nine months because you have to have a minimum of two years including PPC two which is three months so if you take 24 minus three that's 21 months training in an office um and then some people, so the maximum you're allowed to do pre PPC one is four months. So that gives you a balance. Remember I said you have to have 24 months. So that gives you a balance of 20 months and then minus three for the PPC two, um, which is 17 months. So then what you do is you split the in-office training post PPC one between 12 months and then five months 
uh, post PPC2, which is what most people do. Um, so yeah, your training after PPC1 is 12 months and like that is when you do the most learning, um, I would say in your career. That, like that 12 months, like that's literally, for us that was I think, was it three rotations? Yeah, I think it's three rotations. And like three rotations in a big law firm is savagery. Like it's, it is savage because you're learning so much, you're getting to know so many people and then just as you're getting good, you have to leave again and you just have to suck it up. And then you say goodbye to everybody and you go back on the PPC two, which is for three months, okay? So for us, let me recall, for us, the PPC two started, I'm pretty sure it was April, April, May, June. Yeah, because that would make sense because then the PPC one people would be gone from Black Hole. And then the exams were in July. Yeah. Yeah. So it's much shorter than the PPC one. And you're a little bit more grown up. I loved the PPC two because um there was lots of choice as regards what subjects you could do. Um, let me just get up the subject here, PPC2 subject. There's three compulsory modules and three elective modules. So you have six subjects, okay? So the electives are advanced civil litigation, advanced legal practice Irish, banking law, commercial and complex property, commercial contracts, corporate transactions, insolvency, and mid law. Um, and my electives were banking, corporate transactions, commercial contracts I can't remember what was my third one and then um the three core subjects are so professional responsibility which is like uh ethics uh, it used to be called PPCM um so it's ethics and like solicitors accounts and then employment law which famously I failed twice and then advanced family law so Obviously, since I was there, now you do a little bit of family law in PPC 1 and then you do advanced family law in PPC 2. Um, and like just to give you uh, an idea, so it's the exact same kind of structure as PPC 1, but it's it's much quicker turnaround. And, and obviously with the exams, you cannot be entered into the role of solicitors if you don't pass, um, which is you know very daunting for a lot of people and um, for me. But anyway, I got there in the end. Um, as regards electives, like I would say play to your strengths, like the people who knew that they were going to be qualifying into a litigation seat, they did the advanced litigation, people who knew they were going to property, they did advanced property. I knew I was going to none of them, so I did banking because I was going to go and be a finance lawyer, corporate transactions, um, because yeah, I was used to that in Cox's. I don't think I did a third elective, I think we only had to do two, but yeah, obviously in the meantime, um, I've been exposed to all of them. So yeah, and then after the PPC2, you go back to the office for, as I said, five months and then you qualify. Um, so that's it really. Uh, I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please email me at info at I hope you enjoyed this video and hope it gives you some insight. If you are starting the PPC1 this September, uh, have a great time. I hope some of it is back on site and um, Best of luck in your legal journey and I'll see you in the next one.